Are you wondering why you and your boyfriend or girlfriend started out passionately in love only to lose the spark as you got further into your relationship? In this video, you'll discover why you lose interest in someone and whether it's a sign that you should end it or try to get the spark back. Hi, it's Gabrielle, and for over 13 years, I've been a licensed professional counselor and relationship expert in private practice in Boulder, Colorado. And my practice is grounded in the science of what makes relationships work. A lot of people believe that when the spark goes away in their relationship, it's a sign that they don't love the person or they're not with the right person. So today's video is going to clear this up so you don't have to be plagued by these questions any longer. So let's dive in. Maybe you've had a few relationships by now and you're starting to see a pattern. You start out intensely in love with your boyfriend, but over time you start to lose interest in them. It might be little by little, or maybe you genuinely wake up one morning and it just feels like the love that you had for your girlfriend is just gone. And it can be the same whether you're gay or straight, for lesbians or gays, whether it's your boyfriend or girlfriend. What's going on? The question is, why aren't you hot for your partner anymore? How come things aren't just smooth and magical the way they were in the beginning? The answer to this question lies in an understanding of the three stages of love, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. What you may not know is that your relationship goes through three stages, falling in love, commitment, and permanence. So the changes you undergo in your sense of emotional connection to your partner aren't just true for you or for certain types of people, it's true for people all over the world. Your brain goes through normal, natural, and important chemical changes that can account for these three stages. So let's take a closer look at what these stages are. Stage one, falling in love. In the falling in love stage, your brain is flooded with powerful neurotransmitters like dopamine, testosterone, vasopressin, noradrenaline, and oxytocin. This hormonal crescendo creates that intense attraction between you, giving you that over the moon gushing feeling of passionate love. Your lust system is in full swing. Meanwhile, your brain is simultaneously depleted of serotonin, a calming hormone. Without serotonin, you get obsessed and anxious. You experience that can't sleep, can't eat feeling, and you count the minutes until you're reunited with your beloved. The infatuated and addictive feelings that you feel in the falling in love stage are a reflection of the newness that you have with your partner. And newness triggers dopamine, which is central to that infatuation stage. Remember that in the beginning of the relationship, you're all about understanding your partner and seeking them out. You're so curious about them. You just relish every opportunity to get to know them better. And it seems like every new thing you discover about them is just a revelation. You just find them so amazing and enthralling. In this early stage of love, you're blind to each other's faults, which is mother nature's way of increasing the odds that you're going to get together and procreate or at least fornicate. Now think about this from an evolutionary perspective for a minute. Back in the Stone Age, who do you think was more likely to reproduce? The people who just jumped in the sack and got it on immediately? Or those who sat around and thought about whether they were with the right person? People only lived to be 17 to 34 years old. So the faster that people got together and got it on, the more likely that they were gonna pass their genes on to the next generation. In order to maximize the chances that you and your partner are going to reproduce, Mother Nature made sure that you're temporarily able to do things that you won't be able to do at later stages in your relationship. This is Mother Nature's way of lubricating those early stages of your relationship. For example, if you normally need a lot of alone time, you suddenly find yourself relishing spending every waking and sleeping moment together with your new love 24-7. Or you may find your hot new date's quiet demeanor charming, mysterious, and adorable in the beginning of your relationship, whereas later on, you see your boyfriend is cold, withholding, and shut down, which makes you mad. 
Couples who have entered into further stages of the relationship often say, you're not the person I married. And there are many reasons for this statement, but one of them is that during the falling in love stage, your relationship blueprints have not been activated yet. Now, a quick reminder, your relationship blueprints are those early relationship patterns that get formed in response to your relationships with your parents when you're a child and you bring those blueprints, those ways of being in relationship with you into your adult intimate relationships. And so those are going to inform how you interact with your adult partner. But the thing is, those relationship blueprints don't kick in until you and your partner become committed to each other. And so you're not yet in an attachment relationship um, because your brains are still awash in this hormonal cocktail of the falling in love stage. No attachment means that you're not dependent on each other yet. And no dependency means that you haven't yet activated all of those earlier relationships that came before. So your fears, your expectations, all of your self-esteem issues, they're on the back burner in the falling in love stage, at least for now. In the falling in love stage, partly consciously, but mostly unconsciously, you and your girlfriend become more polished versions of yourselves. The early stages of relating are all about deception. Some of you gals out there might buy too much makeup and some of you guys out there might learn how to cook chicken cordon bleu when you usually eat mac and cheese. You ditch your Toyota pickup and lease a new Mercedes that you can barely afford. It's no different in the animal kingdom. Stags grow an impressive rack of antlers that temporarily wows the does, but it disables them when it comes to making their way through the forest. For both humans and animals, both sexes are often rewarded for any exaggeration of reproductive fitness by the opposite sex. So we want to hide our flaws and adopt all of the qualities that the person we're interested in wants to see. It probably goes without saying that very few couples contact a couples therapist within the first few weeks of their relationship. Some couples come to couples therapy saying, we're here because we're trying to rekindle the spark that we felt in the beginning of our relationship. They believe that the feeling of being in love is needed in order to say that they love each other. If they don't have that feeling, that means they don't love each other. When these gushing feelings naturally start to wane and rest assured that they will six months to two years into your relationship, the couples assume that something is wrong with the relationship. But here's the key thing. In no way does the waning of these feelings signal that their relationship is done. It's natural for these feelings to dissipate as you and your significant other progress into deeper stages of your relationship. Unless your relationship is nothing more than a short-term fling, the real problem is understanding what happens next in this natural unfoldment of these three stages and what you need to do to make it work. Stage two is the commitment stage. And here's where things start to shift for most couples. At a certain point in the relationship, you and your boyfriend or girlfriend do something that indicates to both of you that you're in it for the long haul. This is a turning point in your relationship and it could be signaled by a variety of things. Deciding to only date each other, moving in together, meeting each other's families or getting married. Whatever signifies this change for you, it triggers important transformations in your brain. Whether you like it or not, your partner now has the possibility of becoming an attachment figure for you. And by attachment figure, we mean the person whom you turn to when you are in pain, you're demoralized, hurt, weak, or in need. Couples often don't forget their first fight because it's a clear demarcation from their early honeymoon phase of falling in love. This first argument provides the foundation for how the couple is going to deal with conflict moving forward. Or if the fight goes poorly, it may even end the relationship. 
What I often tell couples who are going through this phase is that if they've hit their first fight and they're struggling to recover from their arguments and they're interested in continuing their relationship, it's important that they reach out for professional help from a couples therapist who can help them discover how to stop fighting in a scary and dangerous way. Without professional support, they'll only be more likely to cement these destructive patterns, making it more difficult to resolve them in the long run. Now, commitment and fighting are two words that can really put a damper on that sense of interest and attraction for your partner. So if you're finding that you're losing interest in your boyfriend or your girlfriend, it could be because you've moved through the falling in love stage and into the commitment stage. You've had your first fight and you're starting to think that didn't go very well. Are we really going to be able to make it? And so all of those chemicals in your brain are now starting to change because you've moved into this commitment phase. So you don't have that kind of incredible drug high, natural you know, neurotransmitter high that you had in the falling in love stage. And this might be a moment in the relationship where you're really starting to feel like you're losing interest. If you make it through stage two, the commitment phase, and you decide we're really doing this, then you enter into stage three three, which is permanence. And when I use the term permanence, I'm really using that in a neurobiological way, meaning that your brains now view each other as permanent to one another. It means that you are now attachment figures for each other. And you know that you're not going anywhere anytime soon. So what that permanency does is it then triggers all of those early relationship blueprints and specifically the ones that you formed in relation to your parents when both of you were very little in the zero to 12 year old phase. So each of your relationship blueprints get activated now in your intimate relationship. This isn't a conscious process and it's very important to understand that. It's not like you're saying to yourself, oh, my partner really reminds me of my mother. Although you might say that to yourself, but this is a more uh, on the level of what we call implicit memory or what is classically referred to as the unconscious, meaning that we, our brains will just naturally map all of our previous relationships onto our partner. So our partner becomes like a representative for our mother, for our father, for our previous lovers, for your, you know, important Aikido instructor. But really the problem is that when we've had these negative experiences in relationship, when we found ourselves in insecure relationships and especially within our families of origin, those insecurities are now going to start to rear their ugly heads in our primary intimate relationship. All of your fears, your expectations, your feelings about yourself, whether you feel worthy of love, whether you feel uh, like your partner wants you, um, all of that, those types of issues are going to start to surface. And if those things are anxiety provoking for you because they're insecure, they're going to affect your sense of interest in your partner. All of your anxieties and your fears and your, you know, unrealized expectations and all of your self-esteem issues, that's the opposite of that feeling, that gushing, warm, loving, falling in love feeling. There are many, many different ways that losing interest in your boyfriend or your girlfriend can play out in a relationship based on what happened to you in your early experiences in relationship with your parents. For instance, let's say that you never really felt welcomed in your family. Let's say that your mom and dad were always really busy and they just never seemed to really have time for you. And you come to your relationship with your boyfriend feeling like you're not really worthy of being loved or just assuming that he doesn't really want to spend time with you. 
So maybe how you learned to cope with this when you were young was that you just learned to keep your parents at a distance and avoid any feelings of disappointment because it just hurt so much. Fast forward to today and you just kind of assume that your partner's losing interest in you and maybe you're just losing interest in them too. And that becomes a way of protecting yourself from the pain of feeling like your partner isn't really interested. That's only one of many different examples of how this experience of losing interest in your partner, losing that spark, can actually be kind of a cover up for much deeper issues that are often unconscious. The fact of the matter is that that rush of dopamine and all of that wonderful, warm, gushing, exciting, loving feelings that you felt in the beginning are not meant to last forever. And maybe that's a bit of a downer, but the fact of the matter is that in order for couples to move into the permanent stage of relationship and build a long-term relationship with each other that's satisfying and enduring, they need to build a secure base, what we call a secure base with each other. And that means that they build a relationship that's based on the loving care of one another. It means total commitment, being available to each other, understanding how to provide each other with quick distress relief, and how to be empathic toward one another. Without these fundamental principles guiding their relationship, they simply aren't able to move into a permanent stage because once that dopamine starts to wane, there isn't anything to hold them anymore. Neurobiologically, relationships have to move from being driven by dopamine in the falling in love stage to being driven by serotonin in the permanent stage. And serotonin is a, a slow, loving, a uh, calm kind of hormone, unlike dopamine that's high and excited and, and energetic. And a lot of couples have difficulty moving into this serotonin stage. You and your partner might be great at doing dopamine, but serotonin, not so much. So as you move into this slower, quieter, more bonding phase, the permanent phase, you might start to feel like you're just not really connecting anymore. And that can feel like you're losing interest in your boyfriend or your girlfriend. I'm gonna talk more about what it takes to move into that permanent stage um, in future videos and to create what I call the relationship refuge. Um, a way of being in relationship that's based on care, commitment, availability, relief, and empathy. But for now, the takeaway is that if you had a lot of really intense, loving feelings for your partner in the beginning, but you're starting to feel like they're waning now, it could be that you're just moving into a deeper stage of relationship. All right, now let's hear from you. Have you had these kinds of fears and worries when the dopamine starts to wane, that maybe you're not with the right person and you're just losing interest in them? What stage of relationship do you feel that you're in now? Do you feel that you and your partner were able to make that commitment and navigate your first fight? Leave me your comments below. I look forward to reading them and seeing you in the next video. And if you enjoyed what you learned in today's video, please give it a like right now and share it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. And you can also go to the Power Couple Formula for lots more information about how to build an amazing relationship and powercoupleseducation.com to stay connected.